Surprise! It's Miss Stolberg today. I'm doing our notes for today. So welcome to a new unit. We just finished up unit six, quadratics. So I'm sure you all did great on your test. And now we're going to jump in quadratic applications. So this is where we're going to learn, use what we learned about quadratics and analyze them in some different contexts and do some real world applications with quadratics. So you are gonna need your own note sheet today if you wanna go ahead and get that out. Like I said, we're starting unit six today, which is, no, unit seven, sorry. Unit seven, quadratic applications. So for day one today, we're gonna to be talking about systems of linear and quadratic equations. So you guys have done systems before, so let's just review some vocabulary for this unit. So a system is where we're talking about more than one equation or variable. And with these equations and variables, we're looking at where do they intersect? And where they intersect is called our solution. So our solution is any and all points, usually two-dimensional, x, y, that make both equations true. So if we're looking at where they intersect and points that make both equations true, that means that those equations are equal at those points. So if we recall, we have already learned about linear systems in three variables. So you guys have already looked at systems with three equations and three variables. So that looked something like this to jog your memory. 2x plus y plus z equals 4. x minus y plus 3z equals negative 2. And negative x plus y plus z equals negative 2. So you looked at systems that look like this. And then you would have done elimination and found a solution that was a 3D point. With the coordinates X, Y, Z. So if you remember that, we're golden and on track. So today, We're gonna talk about new systems involving quadratic and linear systems. So instead of talking about lines intersecting, now we're talking about quadratics intersecting with lines. So you should be visualizing this in your head right about now and thinking, well, what can solutions to a quadratic parabola intersecting a line look like? So how many solutions are possible? So let's go through each type of hypothetical situation where we have a parabola and a line intersecting. 
So the first thing that could happen, we might have a parabola and a line that goes right through the middle, something like this. And how many solutions would you say we have here? Two, right. Right there and right there. That's where they intersect. That's where the equations of the line and the parabola are equal. So this is what two solutions would look like. What about if we had something like this? Or something like this. How many solutions do these both have? If you're thinking one, you're correct. One right there and one right there. So this is what one solution looks like. In our last scenario, what if we have something that looks like this? Do they intersect at all? They don't. So this is where we have zero solutions. So since we're talking about graphs, we're gonna look at our first example and we're gonna solve it graphically. So our first example, example number one, part A says solve graphically. So for our system, we have the system y equals negative x squared plus 6x minus 3 and y minus x equals 1. So if we look at this system, we can see that we have an x squared, which means that this is our quadratic. And we can also see that there's a negative. So which graph is our parabola going to look like? Is it going to be up-facing parabola or down-facing parabola? Down, right? That negative means our parabola is upside down. And then this, of course, is our line. So to solve this graphically, that means we're going to use our graphing calculator and plug in these equations into our y equals. So first we need to solve these equations for y. So our first one is done. So in y1, we have negative x squared plus 6x minus 3. And in y2, if we solve for y in this equation, we move that x over, we have y2 equals x plus 1. So if we get out our graphing calculators, We go to y equals and y1, we're going to type negative x squared plus 6x minus 3. And in y2, we're going to put x plus 1. And now we're going to go to zoom standard. That way we don't have to reset our window and we can be sure that we're going to see both our parabola and our line. So zoom standard enter. And anytime you solve something graphically, you want to be sure to make a sketch of the graph so that we can see what you were looking at. So let's do a quick sketch of this. We have a parabola and our line. So how many solutions does it look like we have? Well, it looks like we have one right about there and one right about there. So now we need to know what are these solutions? What are these points where this parabola and this line intersect? So we're gonna go to second, calc, intersect, enter. It should say first curve, you're gonna hit enter. Second curve, enter. Guess, and this is where now we wanna arrow over to where we think our solution is. And then don't, for hit, don't forget to hit enter a second, a third time. So 
So this says our intersection right here is the point one, two. Okay, let's do this process again to find our other intersection. So second calc intersect, first curve enter, second curve enter. Now we're gonna arrow over to our other point and guess, yep, enter. And that tells us that that point is four, five. So our solutions here, we started with a y and an x variable. So that means our solutions need to have our x and our y variable. So our solutions are the coordinates, one, two, and four, five. So that's where our parabola and our line, those equations were equal at those two points. So now let's go over to doing part B. So part B says solve this equation graphically. So for part B, Solve, or not graphically, algebraically. You just solve graphically. Solve algebraically. So now we're gonna solve this same system, hopefully get the same answers that we got graphically, and go through the steps of how we're gonna do this. So this method is how the Regents is typically gonna ask you guys um, to solve these types of systems. So let's go through our steps over here. So step one for all of these is we need to solve each equation for the same variable. Meaning solve them either for x or both either for y. So if we have our same system, y equals negative x squared, plus six x minus three, and y minus x equals one, that means we wanna solve these both for the same variable, either both for y or both for x. And this is up to you about whichever you think is easier to solve for. Since we have an x squared, I think it's easier to solve for y here. We already have one of them solved for y, so this one would be pretty easy to solve for. So for step one, we want to get them both in terms of the same variable, so I'm going to choose y. So y equals negative x squared plus 6x minus 3, and y equals x plus 1. So our second step is going to be set equations equal to each other, because that's what our solution means, right? If they're intersecting at two points or one point, that means that our equations were equal at those points. So since these are both in terms of y, what we're essentially doing is saying, well, if this equals y and this also equals y, we're just gonna sub that right in for this y. So we're setting our equations equal here. So we have x plus one equals negative x squared plus 6x minus 3. Okay, our third step is to solve. So now everything is in terms of x, which means we're going to be solving for x here. So I'm going to move this step over here so that my, I get rid of my negative. So this becomes x squared minus 5x plus 4 equals 0. Now we just have our standard quadratic. And what's the first thing we need to do now when we have a quadratic? Find the discriminant. So b squared minus 4ac equals 
b here is negative 5 squared minus 4, a is 1, and c is 4. So we have 25 minus 16 equals 9. So what does this 9 tell us about how we can factor this, or if we can factor this? 9 is a perfect square, right, which means we can use add multiply to factor this quadratic. So what adds to negative 5 and multiplies to positive 4? Negative 4 and negative 1. So we have x minus 4 times x minus 1 equals 0. So this is where we're using our zero product property. So if we draw our wall, we have x equals positive 4 and x equals positive 1. So we're not done now, right? Because we started with two variables, which means we need to end with two variables, right? We need our coordinate points. So our last step, which a lot of people forget, so you might want to star this, is to back sub to get the other variable. So we know our x values for where these solutions are going to be, but now we need to plug them back into our y equals to find what the y values are going to be. So does it matter which equation I pick? It doesn't, because these are both equal. So I can plug 4 into this one, get my answer. I can plug 1 into this one. But since they're equal at those points, it doesn't really matter. So I'm going to pick y equals x plus 1 to use, because that's easier. So we have y equals 4 plus 1, so y equals 5. Over here, I'm going to use the same one, y equals x plus 1, so y equals 1 plus 1, so y equals 2. So that means our solutions are 0 0.4, 5, and 1, 2. Does this match what we found graphically? Yeah, it does. So we have two points of intersection here. Perfect. So let's look at our next example. So example two, again, we're going to solve algebraically. So our system is 2x squared plus x minus y plus 1 equals 0. And x minus y minus 7 equals 0. So again, let me adjust this a little bit. Step 1, we want to solve each equation for the same variable. So again, I can see that I have an x squared here, which means I'm probably going to want to solve for y. So if we solve for y for our top equation, we have y equals 2x squared plus x plus 1. In our second equation, again, I'm going to solve for the same variable, so I'm going to solve for y. So we get y equals x minus 7. Okay? Second step, set the equations equal to each other. These are both equal to y. That means I can set them equal to each other. So we have 2x squared plus x plus 1 equals x minus 7. Let's get everything on one side of the equation. So we have 2x squared. If I subtract that x, that cancels out. Add 7. So 2x squared plus 8 equals 0. Now we want to be able to solve for x. So let's check that discriminant. So b squared minus 4ac here would equal, do we have a b term? No, so that's just 0. 0 squared minus 4 times a, which is 2, times c, which is 8. So we get negative 64. So if we have negative 64, what does that tell you about the method we have to use? 
Can we use add multiply or reverse box? No, because we have a negative, which means we're going to get imaginary roots, or not roots, imaginary solutions. So that means we have to do our quadratic formula. X equals negative B plus or minus the square root B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. So let's plug that in. We have X equals negative B, right, which is just 0. Plus or minus our discriminant is negative 64, we calculated. All over 2 times A. A is 2, so all over 4. Okay, so now what is the square root of negative 64? Well, is 64 a perfect square? It is, right? The square root of 64 is 8. And if we bring that negative out as i, we have x equals plus or minus 8i over 4. And that simplifies to 2i. So if we have i in our answer, though, what does that tell you about our solutions? They're non-real, right? They're imaginary. So in this case, that means that our parabola and our line don't intersect. There is no solution. So at what step could we have realized that there wasn't going to be a solution? Probably right here, right? When we had negative 64. So if you get a negative as your discriminant when you're doing these, you can just stop there and say, no solution, right? These solutions are gonna be imaginary. So that means they don't intersect. So one little note I wanna add is right here at this step, this is where we wanna get X by itself, right? This is where we're solving for these X values. So something that you could have done right here We just want to get x by itself, no matter what method we have to use. So over here, we could have solved this like this. Divide both sides by 2. x squared equals negative 4. The square root of x squared is x. The square root of negative 4 is 2i plus or minus 2i. And that's the same thing we got right here. So that's just a little note. If you see that there's an easier method to do this, since we're just solving for x, you can use that method. OK, so let's look at our last example. So our last example, example three, is our system negative y squared plus 6y plus x minus 9 equals 0. And 6y equals x plus 27. So what stands out to you about this right here? There's something that looks a little different, right? What is it? Our squared is with the y term this time. So let's just make a little note. Our y is squared. So what variable is it going to be easier to get alone throughout this? The x, right? So it's easier here to solve for x. OK? Let's go through our steps. So step one, we want to solve them for the same variable. We've determined that it's going to be easier to solve for x here. So if we solve for x, we have x equals y squared minus 6y plus 9 for our top equation. In our second equation, we have x equals 6y 
minus 27. Okay, so again, our next step is these are both equal, which means we're allowed to set them equal to each other. We have y squared minus 6y plus 9 equals 6y minus 27. Okay, and now we're solving for this y term. So let's get everything on one side. So we have y squared. If we subtract 6 over, we'd have negative 12y. And add 27, so we have plus 36 equals 0. And now we're still going to do the same methods that we would use to solve a quadratic using x using our x term. So that is to check our discriminant. So b squared minus 4ac equals, our b term here is 12, negative 12. So negative 12 squared minus 4 times a, which is 1, times 36. So if you type that all in your calculator in one step, what'd you get? Zero, right. So what do we know about zero? Is zero a perfect square? Yeah, which means that we can add multiply to solve this. So we'll have two factors, two binomials. What adds to negative 12 and multiplies to 36? Negative six and negative six. Okay, draw a wall. On this side, we get y equals positive six. And on this side, we get the same thing. So from our lesson about discriminants, does that make sense that we would only get one solution? It does, because remember when our discriminant is zero, we should be getting the same factor twice and only getting one answer. So again, this is the part where now we have to back sub. We know our y value, now we need to get our x value. So again, we could pick either of these equations to plug this y into. I'm going to pick this one since it's a little easier. We have x equals 6y minus 27. So I'm plugging in that 6 for our y, so 6 times 6 minus 27. It's 36 minus 27, so x equals 9. So we have one solution at 9, 6. So now we've seen each case that we talked about at the beginning of two solutions, one solution, and zero solutions. So one last thing I want to talk about is what if I had said solve this graphically? Well, let's just start doing that and see what happens. So if we wanted to solve the same system graphically, we had x equals y squared minus 6y plus 9 and x equals 6y minus 27. If I said this graphically, we would be going to the graphing calculator to plug these in into y equals. But what's the problem? These aren't in terms of y equals. These are in terms of x equals. And our calculator isn't set up for x equals. So, hmm, our calculator isn't set up for x equals. Our calculator is set up for function notation. And this actually isn't a function. These aren't functions. So this is actually a sideways parabola. So y squared is a sideways parabola. So let's look at what that means. So we're used to, if we have x and y's, and let's say we're doing y equals x squared. This x is our independent variable. So whatever we plug in for x determines what we get for y. 
So if we plugged in negative 1 for x here, we'd get negative 1 squared, which is 1. If we plugged in 0, we'd get 0 squared is 0. If we plugged in positive 1, we'd get 1 squared is 1. So our graph would look just like this, where we have the points negative 1, 1, 0, 0, and positive 1, 1. So what if we look at the same thing, our x and y table, except our equation is x equals y squared. So now our y is our independent variable. So if I plug in negative 1 for y, negative 1 squared is 1. If I plug in 0 for y, 0 squared is 0. And if I plug in 1 for y, 1 squared is 1. So if I graph that, we'd have the point 1, negative 1, 0, 0 and point one, positive one, which makes a sideways parabola. So the graph of this system we'll get to how to graph these later would look something like this. with our one solution being the point nine comma six. So we don't expect you to be able to know how to do this and how to graph a sideways parabola. So we'll just say there's more to come on this later. But this just helps us see why in this case we got one solution. It's because we have a sideways parabola with our line intersecting at just the top part of it at 9, 6. So take a picture of your notes, upload it, and your homework is out of the book tonight. Um, so during class, you'll need to grab a book and the homeworks are in your um, answer key of what page and numbers you need to do. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in class.